Welcome back everyone, I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Addams Family and this is Living Out of Suitcases. We've been on a small hiatus as of late because our show traveled to Alaska, which was amazing. Because Alaska is so far off from where we left the tour, Kansas, we had to wait while all the trucks drove our set and props and everything to the west coast and then all the way up through Canada to Alaska, then we had our week there, then we had to have another week off while they drove our set down from Alaska to California where we've now met them. But we're here and off and running for another few months. And we had an awesome time in Alaska. Great audiences, great food, and most of all, a great golden day in Anchorage. Anchorage is one of the largest cities in the entire United States. It's actually larger than the entire state of Delaware. Alaska, of course, is the largest state in the country, making up about one-sixth of the entire country's landmass. Being in Anchorage really changes the way you look at the world. The air is so much cleaner and crisper, the people are friendly and hearty, and the views are absolutely breathtaking. We ended up in Anchorage at the perfect time, right in the middle of two iconic events. First was the festival that they call the Fur Rondi, or Fur Rendezvous. It commemorates a time when the fur traders would make their way out of the bush to sell their wares to the public. Today the fur vendors still make their way out, but now there are lots of fun events stretching out an entire week. You can take part in ice carving contests, reindeer runs, and costume contests, all celebrating the tradition that's been going on in Alaska longer than they've been part of our great nation. We were also around for the ceremonial start of the Iditarod, known as the Last Great Race. The Iditarod is a competitive dog sledding race that takes mushers from Anchorage all the way up to Nome over impossible terrain. Today, the race usually takes about eight days straight of racing for its competitors, and people from all over the world come to participate and watch. Dog sledding is one of Alaska's oldest methods of travel, and something you can learn about firsthand if you head about 30 minutes north of Anchorage to the Alieska Ski Resort, where you can hook up with a dog sled trainer, meet the pups, and take a ride yourself. It's seriously one of the most exhilarating things that you'll ever do, and the views and slopes of Alieska are not to be missed either. While you're in Anchorage, be sure to try some of the local fare. Alaskan king crab, fresh salmon, and reindeer sausage are a few of the local delicacies that you can have almost anywhere, but I suggest heading on over to the Snow City Cafe, especially for breakfast. There's usually a line down the block, but the king crab egg benedicts are worth the wait. Okay, if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, it is very, very important that you let your bank know that you're going to be out and about. Because when you start using your debit card in Florida, New York, Alaska, California, Minnesota, North Dakota, Iowa, Ohio, etc., red flags will go up in your bank's fraud department, and it is very likely that they will shut off your card and attempt to stop the horrible thieves who are going around the country on a spending spree. And if your card gets deactivated, it is hell on earth to get another one. Believe me. I've had to do it three times now, and it is not a picnic. It takes about seven to ten business days for them to mail it to you. Oh, and they can't express it to you. At least that's what they tell you. So coordinating where you're going to be versus where they can actually send the card if it actually arrives when they say it's going to arrive is going to be near impossible. Plus it means you have no access to your funds for over a week. So avoid the drama and stop in your local branch or turn over your debit card and give that number on the back a call and let them know how long you'll be bopping around the country. And if you're leaving the country, let them know what countries you'll be in. They'll put a little note in your file so that way when your fraud department starts going haywire, they can tell them to simmer down now. By the way, if you are leaving the country, you may be told by your bank that there are some countries that they cannot put a green flag on because they're too high risk. Places like China and Hong Kong, there are just too much fraud going on there. So they won't be able to put the note in your file that you'll be traveling there. So you just make sure that they have a way to contact you via email, via cell phone number or hotel or something that they can reach you at while you're in those countries. Because if the fraud department tries to reach you and cannot, they will shut that card off. And you do not want to be stranded in another country without a card. It's even worse trying to get that done. And yeah, that's happened to me too. Hopefully this tip will help you keep swiping your debit card all across the country and not be on the phone talking to your bank for hours and hours on end, trying to sweet talk them into reactivating your cards for a few days. Which, by the way, is something they can do, even though they will tell you they can't. Yeah, that's happened to me too. So this month I'm reading The Song of Fire and Ice by George R. R. Martin. Eh, book three, actually. Now you probably know what I'm talking about, even though you might not think you do. Uh, it's better known as The Game of Thrones, which is actually the name of the first book. 
Um, but that is a series that has been going very strong on HBO. And it's phenomenal! It's been called The Lord of the Rings of Our Times, and it truly is just as good, if not even better. Don't hate me, Tolkien fans. Seriously, though, the story is so epic and so expansive, it's almost impossible for me to fathom how George R.R. Martin has imagined it all out. Basically, it takes a look at this place known as the Seven Kingdoms, which have now have been reunited under one crown. And it takes a look at all these different families throughout the land who are kind of in this battle to become the next next king, or see how uh, at least the uh, lineage is going to play out. There's also an epic winter which could last several years on the way. Oh yeah, and the dead are starting to come to life and attack the city walls with immortal strength. You know, typical fantasy stuff, but really cool. The stories are just really well written, and it jumps from point of view to point of view, so every chapter you read you get to see through the eyes of another character. Martin does a really good job of making you fall in love with these characters, and once you're really invested in them, he'll start to kill them off systematically. So you can't really get too attached to anyone in this series, which is one of the great things. And he'll do it in a very surprising way, and to someone who you would least expect, which is going to leave your jaw dropping on the floor in the middle of the subway so people are staring at you. Yeah, they're that good. Now I'm trying to read each book before I watch the season. Each season on HBO seems to correspond to a book. So I've read and watched the first two, and I'm just starting three, uh, while they are starting season four on HBO, so I'm a little bit behind. So wish me some luck, and uh, please join me in reading the Fire and Ice series. If you're reading these books, or if you already read these books, please let me know what you think of them down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Are you surprised to see me this week instead of one of our Adams family members? Me too. But I wanted to um, talk to you guys about something really cool that we got to do in Alaska. Now, while we were there, we were asked to hold a cabaret to raise some money for a local charity, which we gladly did. It was very, very exciting. Um, the charity that we worked for was called the Four A's. Uh, the Alaska AIDS Assistance Association. They're a wonderful organization and they helped over 250 individuals and families who are inflicted with HIV AIDS every year by helping them find um, simple things like uh, transportation to where they need, uh, to things like housing and medication and help with finding drugs and, and dental work and all that kind of wonderful stuff that we kind of take for granted. Um, they kind of step in and help out where they're needed. Um, they also provide education and um, HIV testing all around in Anchorage and all over through Alaska. And uh, they do this on a very, very meager uh, working group. I think there's only like eight people that work there that do all this work um, for the community. So they're a wonderfully, wonderful cause that we got to help out. And we had a wonderful time doing it too. A lot of our cast members stepped up and um, uh, Nolan, our um, conductor, uh, was our conductor and kind of director for the evening and helped us work everything out. Um, I did a little ditty myself and um, kind of hosted the evening. And uh, we uh, got a chance to auction off a bunch of things, um, which was great uh, to help raise money. We were in uh, a wonderful venue for the evening, uh, a little bar called Mad Myrna's. They were so gracious to host us and to have this wonderful space to us, for us to perform in and to invite um, the audience in to come and take part. Uh, we had a wonderful time doing it and we were able to raise $3,000 for uh, this fabulous charity and um, have a wonderful night of music and fun for everyone. Uh, so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you today. Um, what you're gonna see is a little clip of our finale, so our, our final number, which was called More Life, which I thought was very fitting because we were helping to raise money for this organization that helps bring more life to people with HIV and AIDS. Um, so hopefully you'll come back on Wednesday. I'm gonna go ahead on Wednesday and put up the entire night of the cabaret for you to enjoy. But for now, here is More Life. I wonder what else is hiding out there that no one has discovered yet. I wonder if there are stars with expectations that haven't been met. I wonder if the sun gets tired of burning and what magic fuel is making it dry. I wonder how long we'll just keep on turning And I wonder if Angelian is still alive Each day I walk along roads that wind through this town And to my dismay My feet are always aware of the ground But my mind's a million miles away My brain is perpetually scanning for a time Just stop adventure planning Who knows I'm 
for tuning back in this week with me. That's all I've got for now, but don't forget to come back on Wednesday for Adam's Family Portraits, where you can see our full 4A's Benefit Cabaret, and next week for the return of Gaming Out of Suitcases. And as always, if you know of any great places that we should check out while we're in the cities that we're about to go to, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much, and bye!